you all for joining us this morning. We're going to start off with scripture reading, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 12. It says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. For what man is there among you who, who in, if his son asks for bread, will give you a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give you him his serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, and how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? Therefore, whatever you, you want men do to you and do to also to them, for this is the law of the prophets. So um, at this point, uh, um, we're going to do an opening prayer, but I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas. We're still going to be doing Christmas carols this morning. And then um, as we go into the new year, don't forget prayer. Um, you're seeking something, don't forget prayer. Don't forget to seek out and ask God and talk to God and have conversations. So let's go ahead and open in prayer. Father, we come to you this morning thankful. We're thankful for a good day yesterday and just a good week. And Lord, I know that there's several others that are celebrating uh, today as well. So Lord, I just ask right now as we Get ready to go through the church service. Please help us to apply what you would have us to uh, hear from your word and help us to be able to just worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you that are here, we're going to ask you to stand and sing, Angels We Have Heard on High. i 
again, and this morning we're going to continue looking at um, what we would call the Christmas story or the story of Jesus' birth, and while that may be a little misleading for today's um, sermon, but it's that's what we associate it with. Um, we all just spent maybe the last week or so, and some of you still have this next week that you're doing Christmas gifts and uh, you're receiving gifts, gifts from your loved ones and um, some of you have gotten that gift that you're going to re-gift to someone else and um, just all that kind of thing still going on. And some of you probably sat there and was like, I don't deserve this gift. Or you felt like somebody gave you a gift and then you felt, oh, I should have got them something. So you run in there and you find something that you've had and just say, okay, I want to give this to you. Just because we, we feel obligated if somebody gets us a gift that we have to get it for them. And that, that's totally not what this season's about. And I talked to someone, it's, I just remember it, it's, it's been a couple years ago now, and I talked to someone who, they said, you know, this is one of the best Christmases I've ever received or ever had. It's just one of the best Christmases ever. I got to spend time with family. I got to do all to be around this, but they didn't receive one gift from their spouse. And I know a lot of spouses do not share gifts back and forth. Kim and I tried to set a spending limit this year. That didn't work. Um, but so a lot of spouses don't even share gifts. But as you get older, you start to realize that it's not about the receiving. It's not about what you get. But it's about giving and giving with no strings attached but yet we all know that but we still all feel obligated if somebody buys us something to we oh we got to get them something and so think about that next time someone gets you something and then you don't get them anything I'm hoping if they gave you a gift they did that with no strings attached or not for any reason they're not expecting anything in return um, as I was talking to Frank Kirschbaum this morning, I thought, man, I should have got him a gift. Maybe he would have got me some of his son's chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
totally joking with that. And um, so I could go out on a rabbit trail and we'll pull myself in on that. But they, uh, this morning, I want you to focus on the gifts that you give. The gifts that you give. And I'm not talking about the presents that come wrapped. I'm not talking about the presents that um, you just spent lots of money on or that you are going to be exchanging. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the gifts that you give to Jesus. Do you know that each and every one of you are gifted? Now, I don't want to show of hands. I don't want anybody to crack jokes. I'm not trying to crack jokes, but each and every one of us are gifted. Um, I've been told many times, I'm, su I'm assuming if I talk to Rex, he would tell you the same thing. You get so many people that comes up to you and say, I don't believe, I don't know what God's calling me to do. I don't know what I'm gifted. Everybody struggles at one point or another with what they're gifted to do. But God has given all believers a gift that we are to use to serve him. You see, we see in 1 Peter, 1 Peter 4.10, it says, As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So are you using what God's given you for his glory? Are you using what God's given you so that others may come to him? Are you using what God's given you to serve him? What do you do for the Lord? That's what I want you to think about this morning. What do you do for the Lord? I'm going to read through Matthew chapter 2. We read at the end of Matthew chapter 1 last week and going on right from that. Matthew chapter 2 starting with verse 1 says this. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was be, to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among the rulers of Judea, for out of you shall come a ruler whom will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what, the time, what time the star appeared. And he said to them in Bethlehem, and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have bound, found him, bring him forward to me, that I may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, Till it all came, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Verse 11. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child and Mary his mother, and he fell down and worshipped him. And they had opened their treasures. They presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream, they should not return to Herod. They departed by the to their own country in another way. Let me set the stage a little bit. First of all, you see here, you see the Magi, or the wise men. They were seeking the king. And then we see Herod was opposing the king. And then we see the Jewish people, the Jewish priests, they ignored the king. So what do you do with the king? How do you respond to Jesus? How do you respond to Jesus today? And you can look and you can see that Jesus had been born and it had been a little time. So they had gone there and they was wanting to bring these gifts. And you can see, as we saw there in verse 11, that and they came into the house. So they were no longer in the stable. Christmas, as we what we celebrate, was done. Jesus was born and these guys come into the house. And today I want to focus on the magi or the wise men. And I want to focus on their gifts that they gave. And 
I want you to think about that for a moment. There were many, there's many myths about these wise men, and if you, you like to, if you like to study traditions, if you like to study things about Christmas, maybe you read, read some of them. Um, during, during the Middle Ages, legends started that they were kings. Hence the song, We Three Kings. We also hear that they were three in number, and sometimes we even hear names, and it's, I'm not going to screw these up, but Casper, Balthazar, and can you help me, Rex? Mel, Melchit, Melchit, something like that, yeah. George. George. Mel. <laughs> so I'm sure some of you probably heard those names, and again, some of these come from traditions, but really the only legitimate facts we know are found here in Matthew. We don't know how many there were. They assume the three because we hear about the three gifts. We don't know their means of transportation. More than likely, they were probably on donkeys or camels or something like that. But again, we don't know that. We don't know for sure where they even came from. We know they came from afar, but we don't know where. We can see that they appear to be Gentiles. And we also know that they presented their gifts to Jesus. Christmas is over. We all get that warm, fuzzy feeling that we get at Christmas time. Now that Christmas is over, I encourage you and invite you to give your gifts to Jesus. You see, giving to Jesus is never about the giver. It's never about you. One quote said this, Right worship is always and must be the only basis for right giving, right learning, and right service. Why do you do what you do? You know, a lot of times we can get prideful in our gifts. Some of us are gifted musicians. Some of us are gifted singers. Some of us um, are gifted at playing ball. Some of us are gifted at business. Some of us are gifted at just cooking. Some of us are gifted at several different things, and you can use any and all of those things for scripture, for God's glory. Giving that is generous, but done apart from a loving relationship with God is empty giving. It's about you, and you want to look good. You all know that one family member that you always get a really good gift from. You just always look forward to getting that one good gift. We know who gives the good gifts. I'm asking you, what, how do you handle your gift that God's given you? Some of you right now are trying to even imagine, what is my gift? But you know, God's given you a gift. Service that is demanding and sacrificial, but done in the power of the flesh or for our own praise is just empty service. And again, I'll use myself as illustration. You've all heard me say sometimes I get so busy serving the church that I forget to serve God. And it's the same way. Service that is demanding and sacrificial. It can be great. It can be wonderful. And, every, and it looks good to the people. And everybody can say, wow, that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. But if it's done with the power of the flesh and it's done for the wrong reasons, it can just be empty giving. I need to remind myself daily that what I'm doing is for God. Not anybody sitting in the pews. Now, will they meet the reward? Absolutely. Will God use that for them? Absolutely. But what I'm doing it for is for God so that he will be glorified so that you guys can benefit. So next time we start thinking, well, I got to do this, I got to do this, and, and I'm guilty of trying to be too busy. Ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? What are, why are you doing it? Do you want to appear good? Do you want to appear right? Do you want to appear um, gifted? Do you want to appear talented? Do you seek the praise of others? Or do you do it just because you want to worship Jesus? So this morning we're going to look at three gifts briefly. And it's not going to be very long. We're going to briefly look at the three gifts. And we all know what they are. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And that's again where we get the way we think there's uh, the three um, wise men. But... Again, we see there in uh, chapter, verse 11, 
that they gave gold. They gave gold. Now, a little bit of uh, history on the gold. Gold throughout history has been considered the most precious of metals and the universal symbol of material, material wealth and value. It's a pretty big deal. I, I, I don't know anybody here that if somebody gave them some bu a bunch of gold, they'd say, oh, no thanks. It's also a symbol of nobility and royalty. So you ask yourself, so what? You see, it pointed to Jesus as king. He wasn't just a regular old baby that was born in a stable. But chances are, when they gave him this gold, they recognized that he's king. You see, what you do for Jesus, does it point to Jesus or yourself? Does it realize that you are humbled and he is magnified? We're told in John, John says, let me increase, decrease so that he can increase. When we're doing our gifts and we're, we're doing what we our service, are we doing it because we want to appear good or are we doing it because we want to increase Jesus? We want to bring others to Jesus. Some of you right now who are struggling with your gift, well, I'm gifted at this, I'm gifted at that, but then you got others on the other side who are like, I don't know. I want to encourage you before the new year, start praying, God, show me what you want me to do for you. There may be preachers in this room or listening online, future preachers. There may be future people that's going to be leaders in the church. There may be people that's going to do a certain job. There may be someone that God wants you to pray for. You know, I, I have certain people that their gift is being a prayer warrior. And when I'm going through something, some of you know Marilyn Urig. If I go through something pretty tough, I'm calling Marilyn up because she seems like she's got that direct line. And we all have those people. We know people that are gifted. But it's pointless if we're not doing it for Jesus. Two, frankincense. What, what is frankincense anyway? It doesn't make sense. This was a costly, beautiful smelling incense that was only used for the most special occasions. It was used in grain offerings at the tabernacle and temple. My question for you is when we worship God and we use our gifts for him, does he smell a soothing aroma? I don't know how many of you remember, but back in Genesis when Noah and his family got off the ship and they, they went down and, and Noah was um, made a sacrifice to the Lord and it says they, God smelled a soothing aroma. I'm wondering how many of us when we're worshiping is nothing but a nasty stench. One of the worst smelling smells I've ever smelled, and I don't bring this back up to bring up anything bad, but was when Glenn Sue's barn burnt down. Some of you were there. I will never forget that smell. I'll never forget that smell of, of what was going on and because of it, it was a nasty thing, it was a horrible thing. And I think to myself, and that's where I remind myself sometimes when I see people that are just going through the motions of worship, I think their worship smells like that or worse. When we worship and use our gifts for him, it's, he smells a soothing aroma. But when we are not worshiping correctly or doing it with the right heart, and we're doing it so others will see me, it's nothing but a filthy stench, and it hurts his nostrils. You all know the smell I'm talking about that's just like, oh! So what you do for God, do you see it as worship? Do you recognize it as worship? What you do, do you recognize it as worship, or do you just go through the motions? Again, I've, I'll be the first to admit, sometimes I'm guilty of just going through the motions. We all get that way so to a certain extent. But this right now, we're getting ready to come into the new year. I want to encourage you in 2022, your gift that you use for God, don't just go through the motions. I, I, I bow to myself as I'm getting things ready. I was like, okay, next year I'm, I'm going to be less busy, and, I'm, and I work on that year after year after year. And I'm, it's all going to be about God. And that means saying no to people sometimes. Which not, isn't always easy. But when you are worshiping and doing it for the right reason, God will smell all soothing. 
And then the last gift that we read about there in verse 11 is myrrh. Myrrh is also a perfume, not as costly a fragrance, but still a perfume. The size of our gift doesn't matter, folks. Our talent that we think that people think we're less talented than other people, that doesn't matter. You know, uh, we always try to compare gifts and we try to get the biggest gifts at, at Christmas time and all of that. And then I also know that if you're a singer, you're always comparing yourself to that one individual. If you're a preacher, you're always comparing yourself to that one individual. If you're a motivational speaker or if you're a farmer, if you, we always all are comparing ourselves to each other. But we should never be comparing ourselves to each other because the size of the gift that we're, if we're doing it for God, it doesn't matter. If you don't believe me, let's look at Luke. Luke chapter 21 verses 1 through 4 says, And he looked up and he saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all these out of their abundance have put in offerings for God, but she out of her poverty put in all her livelihood that she had. Think about that next time you start comparing your gift to someone else. You want a world-renowned preacher? You're going to have to go somewhere else. Watch it online. Those of you that watch it online, there's a lot better preachers than me. You might want to click over and watch them. Don't do that. <laughs> Some of the singers, and I, you all heard me say in the, about here a few year, weeks ago about when I went down to Trinity and, and their pastor stood up and he talked about how he, he doesn't have a great voice. But that was the sweetest and the best music that I heard all weekend because I knew it came from the heart and the size. Yeah, they had better singers with better voices through the week. But I tell you what, that was the best music I had heard, the best song I had heard because he was doing it for the right reasons, because that was his widow's might. And some of us, our widow's might is our gift, but we need to stop comparing ourselves and what we have to offer with others' gifts. Because your gift is going to reach somebody that that big time name person never will. Because what it all comes down to is relationships. You have a relationship with that person where the high people that is amazing at whatever you do doesn't have a relationship with them. So what it all comes down to is relationship. If we give Jesus our best, it's better than things that appear great in people's eyes, but done all wrong motive. So I'm going to ask you this morning. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads if you're here. Got a couple things running through my mind. First of all, I want to talk to those of you that God's been speaking to that maybe he's asking you to do something and you just don't know if he's really asking you to do that and you want to be sure. I'm not going to call you out by name, but I want to pray for you while I'm on vacation and going forward. So if, if you've been feeling like God's calling you to do something, but you just don't know what, or maybe you do know what, and you just need the confirmation, maybe this sermon was that confirmation, or maybe you just need the strength to be able to step up and say, I'm going to do it. If that's you, just raise your hand and say, Ken, pray for me. Okay. Okay. I see several hands going up. If you're using your gift right now and you're not doing it with the right heart or you compare yourself to someone else and you want it to be more for Jesus instead of trying to uh, please others if you say Ken just pray for me about that as well I want you to raise your hand as well okay, okay. I want to remind you guys our gift should point to Jesus not ourselves just like the gold. It should be soothing aroma, but not a hypocritical stench, like the frankincense. And like the myrrh, we should always give Jesus our best, even when we, by human standards, it may be small. I want you to just spend the next couple of minutes, couple moments here. Normally I will say a prayer, 
And I'm going to say a prayer, but I'm going to say a quiet prayer because I want this to be a moment between you and Jesus. I want you to ask Jesus to use you in a mighty way in 2022. I want you to ask Jesus to allow your gift to be used for him. And it not, not point to you, but it points to him. So I'm going to shut up for a couple moments, and then I'll pray out loud. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this church. We thank you for those that are watching online. We're thankful for the gifts that you've given us. But Lord, I, myself, and as well as some others, probably here need to repent because we don't use those gifts for the intended purposes. Forgive us. Forgive me. Help me to use my gifts to glorify you instead of myself. Help me to never use it for personal gain. Help us to just all and everything we do to glorify you. Lord, as we start 2022, as we would start seeing people use their gifts, I have no doubt that the church will receive some of those benefits. You will reap the glory. You will be worshipped with a soothing aroma. And when that happens, we all benefit. And I look forward to seeing what 2022 holds for each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the gifted people. And Lord, we just pray right now, if you're speaking to people's hearts about maybe doing something, and, or maybe you know what they know what you're doing, calling them to do, Help them to step up and say, okay, I'm going to step out on faith. Because I know with God all things are possible. Give them the strength to say yes when their heart is saying no. Give them the strength to say yes when people all around them, and maybe their circumstances are saying no. Help them to step up and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. This time we're going to ask Wayne to come forward as we sing Old Little Town of Bethlehem. Certainly the stand is clear. You're able? <laughs>
And most of you know after today, my family and I are going to go on vacation this next week. So um, we're getting ready to do praises and prayer requests. But if you have any this week that you want put on the um, prayer chain, then call Wayne or Sharon and they can put it on for you. And uh, we'll have those as well. So um, just want to go through some prayer requests. Uh, we think of Rebecca Whitaker, uh, Bob Bash out in the country, Jeff Rickenbacker, Bill Imes, Jerry Schlick, uh, Shelley Wright, Kimberly Kaiser. We also think of the family of Don Hemmerly. Uh, her brother Dan Merchant passed away from COVID, so just uh, remember their family. Continue to remember Tim Curtin, Karen Curtin, Melvin Donnell, uh, Pat Lamb, Shovel Webb, Buck Buckenau, Karen Buxton, and then still continue to remember Aaron and Aiden and Shaylin McNamara's grandma. Also, uh, some of you know or recognize or know John Reddick. He's one of the gentlemen that went to Canada with us the last time we went. Um, his grandson passed away this week, so just remember his family. Um, this time we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come to you today. We're thankful. We're thankful for your gifts that you give us once again. Lord, we ask right now that you remember these requests. For those that are struggling, give them strength. Bring, give them encouragement. For those that are sick, we ask for healing. For those that are mourning the death of a loved one, we ask for, again, encouragement and just wrap your arms around them. For those that will be traveling either home or away, we ask for safe travels. And we just ask that all these things are done and you get the glory for each and every one. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, just a few announcements. Um, we are accepting offerings through Venmo and PayPal, or if you're here, you can do it through the offering plates in the back. Um, just a reminder, next Sunday is um, Mission Sunday, so if you'd like to give to missions, uh, mark your checks accordingly, or also if you'd like to give the Parsonage Fund or to the Memorials, Memorial Fund or the Sunday School Fund, you can just mark your checks accordingly. Also, if you're looking for areas to minister, we talked about gifts. Some of you guys are gifted, but not using those gifts. So if you're looking for areas to minister and use your gifts, there are possible ministries on the back of your bulletin. If you're willing to do one of these things, talk to me and uh, we can see what we can do. Also, um, if you'd like to start receiving information, uh, prayer requests, cancellations, announcements, you can text HERITAGE CU to 84576. Also, the food pantry is coming up. By the way, I just want to let you know, those of you that helped the family, that other than the uh, kids at the food pantry, but I know some of you stepped up and gave gifts and stuff, I received some pretty special pictures last night of the kids opening the gifts, and um, the, the mom was very, very grateful. So, um, and I, it's, it's a joy to be able to um, experience that and so thank you for allowing me to experience that and if you'd like to see those pictures I can show you if you uh, if you're one of them that helped I can show you those pictures um, but anyway I wanted to say thank you for that um, also the January food pantry is coming up that's going to be on January 24th we need the donations here by Tuesday January 18th we need boxed mac and cheese noodles canned spaghetti and meatballs tomato juice Tuna helper, tuna, and then we always take paper products. Um, also, if any of you are not, haven't been playing dart ball, but you would like to play dart ball, we'd love to have you on the team. And our next game will be January 6th at Sycamore. And if you're interested, talk to Drew. He's not here today, so you can talk to me or, or call Drew, and we can just get you on there. And we'd love to still have you. we still got room for people. Um, also... Next Sunday, if you are watching online, we'd have, love to have you here in person. Katrina Forsyth, a local lady, uh, but she's living in Chicago now, working with CEF. She's going to be here and be our guest speaker for mission service, so we're looking forward to that. All right, some of you have been asking, uh, what can we do for the tornado victims? I got a phone call this past week, actually it was last Sunday afternoon, from one of the elders over at Grace Chapel Christian Union Church. And they asked me, they said, what are you doing to help the tornado victims? And we're, we're looking to do something. I said, well, I'm glad you called because I've been looking for things and I can't find anything. He said, well, would you want to partner up with us? So the next two Sundays, January 2nd, January 9th, we are going to be taking 
tornado relief items. If you are here this morning, you can see out there in the foyer, there's a table. And it may be some of the same items that you bring for the food pantry. Some of their greatest needs and, and it would be boots or non-perishable foods, Walmart gift cards in the denominations of $10 and $20. That way they can hand out whatever they need to to different people. And water. Um, if anybody knows anybody that has any water, I know they're in need of water. Um, so, um, but they are partnering with a group called Christian Aid Ministries, and they wanted to see if we could help and be able to work with that. And so um, then we're going to try to get together on the 10th or that week and try to be able to take some down and be able to make sure that the proper uh, gifts go where they needed to be given. If you have any questions about that, feel free to ask me. Um, and so we can go from that again. Next two Sundays, we're going to be taking things, the second and the ninth, uh, and we'll, they'll take just about anything for that as well. So, speaking of the ninth, there's a lot going on on the ninth. I already mentioned last week that we're going to be putting away Christmas gifts as, or Christmas ornaments here at the church that day and taking down Christmas decorations. And another thing, after talking to the elders this week, um, we're not going to have talking about it that day. We're not going to, because I know there are two different sides of extremes when it comes to COVID. And so what we've decided we're going to do, we're going to do a paper ballot and we're going to decide and we're going to let the congregation decide whether they want to have the sportsman's banquet in 2022 or not. Now, it, I'm going to give you a little bit of heads up of what it's going to be, what your vote would be. It will either be yes, I think we should have the sportsman's banquet, and if you vote yes, that means you're willing to serve at the sportsman's banquet. Or you, if you're not willing to serve at the sportsman's banquet, then I encourage you to put no. Because all those yeses, we're going to expect that many people to help. So it will either be yes, that... I think we should have it and I'm willing to help or no. Um, now I do know that when discussing some of that, that there's a, a few people that said, if, if I say no, if we decide to have it, I would still help. So I would also ask you to put that on there whenever the time's right. And again, I'll explain that to you um, when we do the vote, but I just wanted to make clear that way you can kind of be thinking about what you think should be. Um, again, I know there's all kinds of strong opinions one way or the other, and without getting into a big discussion, we're just going to do a paper ballot, the majority is going to rule, and we'll go from there. Um, so that'll be on January 9th. Then also, speaking of Sportsman's Banquet, another church has already decided they're going to have theirs. Um, I did hear a little bit of rumbling about some things, but again, I don't know how accurate it is that with everything picking back up with COVID, that could be affected, but I'm not 100% sure of that, and I'm not sure if that's an accurate quote or not even. But Hillsboro is going to be having theirs January 29th, um, and Adam Ray is going to be the speaker. So if we, whether we have ours or not, if you say, hey, if they have theirs, I'd like to go, let me know, and we'll probably try to get a group to go down. Um, it's a great time if you've never been there. So, okay, at this time I'm going to close in prayer, and then I'll shut off the recording, and then I'll talk to those that are here. Father, we come to you today thankful once again. We're thankful for all that you do for us. We're thankful for your many blessings. Help us to always be aware of your goodness. Help us to always be aware of what you've done for us. Help us to not just take the gifts you've given us for granted, but help us to be thankful and help us to use those gifts to worship you. Lord, as we go throughout and go out these doors this morning, or if we shut off the internet and whatever we do, help us to do everything we do to do it for you. In Jesus' name, amen.